So now what I want to talk about is the experiment that you performed where you were specifically looking at selective permeability. Now remember that selective permeability can select for things based upon either a physical or a chemical characteristic. So physical characteristic, we're talking about size typically. Chemical characteristic, um, we can be talking about charge, polarity, uh, hydrophilic or hydrophobic molecules. Um, in this particular exercise, you were looking at a physical characteristic of each of these different molecules. And that physical characteristic was size. So the relative size of these different molecules is going to determine which is capable of permeating. And you had several different molecules. You had sodium chloride, sodium sulfate, glucose, you had starch, which is a polymer built from monomers of glucose molecules, and protein. And then you also had a mixture that included all five of these. Okay? So what you did in this exercise was you took all six of these. So each of these solutions you placed into a bag and placed that bag in a beaker. Okay, so you took some dialysis tubing and you tied a string around it made what looked like this little candy container, or candy wrapper, and you had this bag that you placed in a beaker, and in that beaker you placed water. And you let that sit for about a half an hour to 40 minutes. At the end of the incubation time, you took the bag out and you threw it away, and you then drew up solution from this beaker, because the question that you're asking in this is, which of these are capable of permeating this bag and coming out into the water of the beaker? Okay. So this bag, this dialysis tubing, is going to select from these different substances based upon their size. So the smaller substances, like your sodium chloride and your sodium sulfate, are going to have a much easier time permeating the bag and winding up out here in the beaker then your larger substances are like protein or starch. Okay. Now the mixture is to also show you that the diffusion of any of these across that selectively permeable membrane is not affected by the presence of any of the larger molecules. So each of these has its own ability to diffuse across a selectively permeable membrane and the smaller ones are not going to be affected by the presence of the larger ones. So, speaking about relative sizes, these two were the smallest of all of your molecules. And we expected those to actually permeate the membrane. So we do expect these to permeate. Starch and protein are far too large. So we don't expect them to permeate. Glucose is the tricky one. Okay, from one of your other experiments, you saw that sucrose actually didn't permeate the bag. So disaccharide is too large. But as it turns out, glucose happens to be just small enough that it still maintains the potential to permeate that bag. But I put a dash check because what we're going to find with glucose is that it's going to be in very, very, very low amounts when it does actually permeate the bag. Okay? So compared to, say, the chloride ions, we're not going to see a whole lot of glucose permeate that bag. Okay? Now, in the mixture, if these three permeate their own individual solutions, permeate the bag, so in other words, the bag that we made of just sodium chloride, we get chloride ions. The bag of just sodium sulfate, we get sulfate ions permeating the bag. And the bag of glucose, we see glucose permeate the bag. But in theory, in the mixture, we should see sodium chloride test positive, sodium sulfate test positive, and we should see a positive test 
for glucose. Well, we still get a negative test for starch and a negative test or result for protein. Okay, so this is what we were expecting to see in each of these different solutions after we had allowed their bag to sit for 40, uh, 30 to 40 minutes in the beaker. So we remove this and then we remove the water and we test the water for each of these. Now how are we going to test? Okay, well some of these we've already performed tests on before, detection tests, but some of them we haven't. So let's go ahead and just draw it out again. Okay, so we're going to put molecule slash ion. So molecule slash ion, and then our reagent that we're going to use to test for it. What reagent are we going to use to test for each of those particular ions or molecules? Okay. Now what you need to understand is that sodium chloride is going to dissociate when it goes into the water into sodium ions and chloride ions. So we're actually going to be testing for the chloride ions. And the reagent that we're going to use to test for those chloride, chloride ions is called silver nitrate. So we're going to use silver nitrate to determine if we do or don't have chloride ions in the solution. For sodium sulfate, it too can dissociate into sodium ions and sulfate ions. So again, we're going to be looking for sulfate ions. And to do that, we're going to use a solution called barium chloride. And I'll talk about what colors we're looking for here in just a second. For glucose, you've done this before. You're going to use Benedict's. For starch, hopefully you're familiar with these, you're going to use iodine. And for protein, to detect those uh, peptide bonds, you're going to use biuret. Okay? So silver nitrate, barium chloride, benedict's iodine, and biuret. Remember with the mixture, you took five test tubes and filled them with mixture, and then you added one of these five to each of those test tubes to again test and see if any of these were present in that beaker okay, from your mixture solution. So, now let's real quick talk about what color we're expecting to see with some of these. Okay. So, so when we're testing for those chloride ions from sodium chloride, here's our positive result, here's our negative result for what we expect to see. If it's positive and chloride ions are present, we expect to see a whitish, cloudy color or substance. Okay, this is in one of those video protocols that I've shown. If it's not present, then we expect it to be clear. Okay, but we've already determined that it was present, so you should have hopefully seen this whitish, cloudy color. Okay, for the sulfate ions, with the addition of that barium chloride, we're also going to see a whitish, cloudy color if we have a positive result, which we did observe. If we have a negative result, we expect to see a clear color. Our solution should stay clear. Okay, for glucose, this one was a little tricky. If we get a negative result, we expect the Benedicts to remain blue. If we get a positive result, we expect it to see that reddish brown color that we've seen before. But remember, I also told you glucose was only going to give us a slight positive. So what we're really looking for here is a color change of any kind with this glucose. And what we actually wind up getting is kind of a greenish brown. That is still an acceptable positive result. But I should note that this 
denotes a slight positive result. So that greenish brown color, while it is still positive, is a slight positive compared to what we saw when we did macromolecules and we got that very defined reddish brown. Okay, and then finally for our starch, we expect to either see a bluish black if we have positive uh, starch is present, or we expect to see kind of a reddish brown, the iodine, if it is not present in the beaker. Starch could not permeate the bag, so we expect to see reddish brown for the negative result. Finally, with protein, the addition of that biuret, we expect to see purple if protein did permeate the bag and is present in the beaker, or we expect to see blue if protein was not able to permeate the bag and did not wind up in the beaker, and we wound up seeing blue. So, chloride ions, sulfate ions, and some glucose molecules were able to permeate the bag and wind up in the beaker, and that's why when we drew up from the beaker and tested for these three, we got those positive results. So, these can permeate the bag, but these two can't because the bag is selectively permeable and only molecules or ions that are smaller are going to be able to permeate that bag. Okay. The reagents we used to detect each of these, the colors we expected to see and did see based upon what could or couldn't permeate the bag. So that's it.